So I'm going to put in a plane. And this plane, I'm going to rotate 90 degrees, R, Y, 90. And I'm going to scale it up a bit. So that's going to be my wall that's going to have the concrete on it. Um, it's quite a simple shape. I don't need to do anything fancy with my unwrapping. U to unwrap and oops, in edit mode, U to unwrap. And it's unwrapped. The concrete texture is not square though, so we'll just make a couple of little adjustments. I'm going to come into uh, UV image editor. So that's the UV image editor of that. And this one is going to come and I can make this one a uh, node tree. And as always, we're changing that default Blender render engine to Cycles render. And while I think about it, I'm going to turn on my screen casting keys. So whatever I push, you can see the letters down here. You can kind of see what it is. So I forgot to, do, to tell you that stuff. So unwrap is U, um, and the shortcut keys for changing the view was like five and three up to the side there, um, and Cycles render. So I'm going to make a new um, uh, material, and I'm going to delete that one and shift A search principle P R I N. That's enough. Since you've texted your knives, you kind of have seen this before. Um, shift A search image, and that one's going to connect over here. And I'll be doing a little bit more over on this stuff. So I'm going to start connecting. There's my concrete that. Um, got from Polygon, purchased legally of course from Polygon, um, so I'm going to copy that and All right, so I've got two colour variants, so I'll just pick the first one to begin with, open image, and this we can't see on here because it's not in either material or rendered or texture, so if I do that I can see concrete there already. Now I'm going to open up concrete there so I can see the concrete and you'll notice that it's quite stretched wide, whereas the um, this is not. And I can also notice that it's actually rotated slightly, because you see that one's this way. So that's at the bottom. So if we rotate this 90 degrees, R90, and I have to change that scaling, S, Y. So if we look at that, that's square, just like that is, so it's not stretched strangely. If we look at this texture, it's got some funny uh, pieces on it that we may or may not find interesting, but I'm going to just grab that and move it across on the x-axis. And I'll just pop it there or wherever I find somewhere that's interesting that I, I like the look of. Does that make some sense? So I might do something like that. You make the choice however you like, but that looks a bit more interesting than a plain flat background. All right, so then back to the node area. Come on. Just making this bigger so it's visible as much as possible. I like to duplicate these because it makes life a little easier. I'm going to go Shift D to duplicate. And the reason it makes life easier is it goes straight to this right place. I'm going to use the gloss map. Blender doesn't think in terms of gloss, it thinks in terms of roughness, so I'm going to invert it. Shift A, search, invert. So I'm going to feed that through. And there. It's a bit like an out of 10 scale. Is 10 the highest or is 10 the lowest? They're sort of opposite, so the invert sort of swaps that. And this one is non-color data. That's very important. You'll get better results from non-color data. Duplicate one more. And this one is going to be the normal map. And that has to feed through the normal map. And I plug that one through here. You can do further stuff to it if you wish to. Um, for example, if I want to change the color of that concrete, because if maybe gray looks boring and maybe I want to have a red wall, then through this color line here, I can put in an RGB node that makes it red. So that one I'll use. I quite like having that one. Um, and shift A search RGB and I'm going to use this mix RGB here. So if I plug that in. What's happening is the photo color is mixing with the color that's in there and that's just a plain boring gray. Now if I click on this I can change it and pop those ones up. But I personally like the look of this color wheel. It kind of reminds me that I'm modifying it. So if I bring that over to here in the blue section, or the green, or the red, I make my wall a different color. 
So that's quite a cool way to make that a different color. So if I want to make it slightly yellow or red or something like that, then I'm, I'm able to do it. I'm also able to change how much by this factor by sliding all the way left, all the way right, um, and it sort of factors in how much that I want. So I'll just put that back to 0.5. Um, I also don't particularly like having these lines all over each other because it gets a little bit messy. That's just my preference. I like to make it readable so that when I'm thinking about it or showing somebody what's going on, no one has to sort of really concentrate hard to see all these lines. So that's part of what we're doing. The second part is um, we're going to bake some lighting on here. And um, I'm going to put in maybe um, or spill lamp. I'm going to try a spotlight. You see that one there? It's quite cool. We can sort of do some aiming with it. And what we'll do is pop that into rendered mode. And I'm going to have another window so that I can manipulate it up here and then I can see its effect down here. So if I bring that in closer, we can kind of see, hey, that's got a good spotlight effect. See, that's got a cool spot. So if I want to do that to sort of replicate our own version, a bit like in um, the Blender Guru beer, I'll just search this in the background. Essentially, we're making our own version. <coughs> so he's made, that's his concrete image in the background. Um, and he's made his own one with a cool spot effect. So I think he might have photoshopped his, but we're going to do ours in Blender. Um, and we're just going to muck about with the lighting to make this the way we want it. So this is all up to you. I'm just going to do a quick one for the purposes of the tutorial. I'm going to increase the lighting effect on that. I'm going to make that to say 200 and see what effect that has. So it's made it high, um, increase brightness. Um, that's the, just that, that lamp that's there, and I can move that anywhere I like. So if I move that closer, obviously, I think I like the effect of that one better than the um, than this one. So if I switch that off, then I don't have to worry about it. So that lamp, pull it across, and we could put multiple lamps around. The closer it is, the more intense that spot is. So you see that fades away as I pulled it away from the wall. Um, It's a kind of cool looking wall I think um, and again if I boost that we'll see and you're just mucking about with it I can also change the color here so if I want to make that light red then I can make a red light or a blue light or a green light let's go with red because you know you guys have got knives and stuff so that might look a little bit more interesting to you um, so that's something that I think looks kind of cool now the next technique that we're going to look at is baking. So that's going to essentially bake out um, the appearance. So we're going to follow um, this guy's technique. Um, blender um, baking 5,000%. So this guy makes a dog. Hi, this is a quick video. And in here, he's got a whole bunch of different brown colors that he's applied to his dog and then he bakes them out. So if we skip forward a wee bit, stealing his technique, he's unwrapped it. So there's his dog unwrapped. So he's making a new image and he's going to bake onto it. So let's make a new image as well. new and this one's going to be um, wall baked texture and let's make it nice and large 1024 is a bit pathetic so let's make that at least maybe times three so it's nice 3k times three nice and big wall baked texture go okay and then I'll go save as just for the demonstration purposes I'm putting it on my desktop so at the moment there's just a black picture 
and what we're going to do is we're going to bake onto them. So again, following this tutorial, bake test same, same as up here. here. So, so he's, called it, he's called his bake text. We called ours something else. Um, so what we're going to do is in the node section. That's the light. That's our plane. Shift A switch. So we don't connect this to anything. And we're going to go wall baked texture. And again, stealing his technique. That information down, down here. here. You don't you need don't to need hook to it up at all. In fact, you, you, you mustn't must hook it up. It up. Just leave, leave it there, there have, have it selected, selected and then it knows it's going to bake it to this object here. Or this node. Uh, the, uh, the only weird, weird thing, thing is, is that if you've got, got lots of textures assigned to your uh, model, you can see, you can see the, the different areas, areas are painted, painted with different, different textures. textures, you need, you need to, put to put this onto each, each of them, so it's baking the information from each of these onto one of these. You just press Control c and paste them in to each one. Okay, so you can see I'll paste them in, we'll up to 200. Samples, yeah, let's do that. Yeah. So he's taking his samples up, so that's increasing the quality. So down here under sampling, he's put us up to 200, so let's do ours 256, because we're awesome and we want our render to come out good quality. Um, For now, and, and I should be able to press bake. I've got it on combined, so all the lighting information uh, from these three lights I've got here will be uh, pasted onto it. Okay, uh, there are different options here as you can see. Coming back over to this, and we're looking for so under that's under bake, could be down the bottom here. Bake combined, like he had, this is selected, and then we can click bake. And you'll see this little slider up here that's going to do a little bit of building and do some calculations. We just have to wait for that to finish. Okay, so that looks all baked. What we do is a search emission. Like that one, save that image. There we are. Renders instantly. It's all applied. There's my bake texture. Make sure it's saved. And emission through to the surface. So then we can put that in front of whatever object we want to put in there. We can pretend that's a knife. So when we move around, you'll see that it's rendering the box, but the wall is already done. Thank <laughs> you.